Today, I'm going to show you how to replace the valve cover on a Chevy Cruze and we'll cut it open to see the cause of this common problem on the 1.4 liter turbo engines. This video will also apply to a lot of other vehicles with the 1.4. Here's the problem I was having, and it's a really common issue on these engines. There's a vacuum diaphragm under here. I was getting a check engine light, and it was running rough. And when I opened the hood, I could hear a lot of air getting sucked into here, which made me think there was a big vacuum leak in here. To fix it, you have to replace the entire valve cover. There are other things to check in the PCV system. There's a check valve in the intake that often fails. It looks like mine might have failed, and that might have played a part in the valve cover failure. I'll have to address that as well, but not today. There's a check valve by the turbo. Mine was sticky, so I took it off and cleaned it with brake cleaner. There's also the vacuum diaphragm that I'll be replacing today. First off, remove the engine cover. Next, remove the two torque screws that hold the coil in place. Here's a tip I can tell you about because of something I broke. On this connector, you're supposed to release it by pulling back this orange locking tab. This is in the locked position, then pressing down the button and pulling it off. But mine would not come off and instead it broke. I got it glued back together here so it's working, but I would suggest uh, you not worry about removing this if you're having trouble with it. Just remove the coil and then you can rest it off here to the side and leave it connected. There's enough wire here to let you do that. Pull the coil straight up to remove it and pull out the dipstick. You need to pull the wiring harness out of some brackets. You also need to remove a bracket holding wires on the front of the valve cover. This is me reinstalling it. I forgot to record the removal. It has little tabs you need to release to take it off. You'll need a special socket to remove the valve cover. It's called external Torx. The size is E10. I bought a cheap set at Harbor Freight a while ago, but there are lots of places to buy them. Then remove the fasteners holding the valve cover in place. Then wiggle the valve cover off. There are some delicate connectors around it, like on some sensors on the front of the head. Be sure not to yank on those wires or you might start breaking things. You can also disconnect more wires if it helps you wiggle it out. Clean the surface and make sure none of the screw holes for the valve cover are full of oil. If they are, blow them out with compressed air. I paid $67 for a genuine GM part from Amazon. My local dealer wanted more than MSRP at $100. There's this little clip on the valve cover that holds the wiring harness. You can swap it over now, but I might recommend disconnecting it before you even remove the valve cover and leave it on the wiring harness. That would make taking the valve cover off easier. There are two spots where you use silicone sealant where the block and the timing cover meet. Scrape off the old sealant and add a dab of new silicone. Put the valve cover back in place. Here's where I discovered that it would have been easier to remove this wiring clip before even pulling the valve cover. It's easier to do it with this removed. Now tighten all the fasteners. I used a torque wrench and torqued them in the order listed in the service manual. You can find that info with an online search. Now put all the wiring harnesses back in place. Reinstall the connector on the coil if you removed it and reinstall the coil. Because I'm a torque spec nerd, I torqued all these to spec as well. Put the engine cover back on and you're done. Now let's tear this thing apart and see why it failed. <laughs> so now that this is out of here, we can see where it failed. These scratches and this little hole here were caused by me cutting it open, but I did not do this. This big crack is where it was leaking. So this is a vacuum diaphragm. The way this works is it sits on top of this spring and it flexes in and out based on the vacuum of the engine. And here where it cracked, that created a big vacuum leak.
Now that I have this out of here, I can see why these are so failure prone. This material is thinner and more flimsy than I was expecting. If they use something a little tougher here, my guess is they would not fail as easily. You know, as I look at this more, with a tiny design change, this could be an easily serviceable part and you would not have to replace the whole valve cover. This cap is plastic welded on, that's why I had to cut it off. If they made it so the cap screwed off or you could just easily pop it off, you could replace this diaphragm and fix the problem. But GM does not sell the diaphragm by itself as far as I'm aware of, and there's no way to easily remove the cap so you have to replace the whole valve cover. This is just an example to show how the PCV system in this car is really poorly designed. This could be easily serviceable and fixable, but it's not. And also the check valve in the intake that fails all the time is also not serviceable, which means you have to replace the whole intake. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button down below and subscribe so you'll know when I release new videos.